Hi, everyone. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today is a concept in uh, actually our Axiom tool, uh, and this would be relevant for people who are importing board layout, and it's something called a point port. And it's a new type of port that we've developed here at AWR, uh, which hopefully solves a couple issues for you, the first one being um, how to automatically have it set up. You basically don't have to do anything. And second of all, of course, ease of use is great, but we'd still like you to get a good answer. So I want to go through the pluses and minuses of it, uh, make you aware of it, and uh, see how it works. What you see in this slide right here on the right is a, a board uh, that we brought into Microwave Office using our new improved uh, import tool. Uh, this board actually came from a Zookin layout. Thank you, Zookin, uh, for the board. And you can see the uh, details here. It's an 11-layer FR4 board, and uh, it's complicated. This would be typical of a big system board that you would see, uh, for example, in base stations. Uh, very kind of typical commercial uh, board that our customers would make. And in this board, there are parts that should be EM, the RF sections of the board. Now, this is a challenge. Uh, first of all, the complication, of course, would stress any EM simulator. And so what our designers usually do is once this is imported, they select certain nets. You're, you obviously don't want the entire board. Uh, most of it, quite frankly, is probably digital, low-frequency type things. And they, in this example here, you can see they have selected approximately 12 nets. You're going to want some of the area around those nets, and so this is where you see this blue, um, uh, whatever you want to call it, polygon, I guess, rounded edges. And uh, that is drawn automatically, and what it's going to do is cut out that portion of the board, bring it into Axiom, and we can go ahead and simulate it. Now here is Axiom after that part of the board has been brought in. You can see there are quite uh, a large number of ports here, approximately 30 ports. This is typical for these types of problems. And you as a designer really would rather not be manually placing each one of those ports or setting up their properties, uh, what type of grounding they should have, if they're going to be calibrated, et cetera. And this gets us to the subject of point ports. Again, the point port is used in Axiom. And, and as many of you are aware, we also have Analyst, our 3D EM simulator. I'm not really going to talk about Analyst in uh, this um, talk with point ports, because point ports aren't used in Analyst. Quite frankly, most board designers are probably going to use Axiom. Uh, it's faster for a lot of these applications. There are exceptions. Uh, if you have a lot of ground planes, power planes, actually finite elements could be competitive. They're both going to take a very long time in that situation. So I'll focus on Axiom and the point ports. What do we need for a port? Well, first of all, you have to place it, of course. And the point port is automatically placed uh, in the middle of the pad. Um, it's done for you, OK? So it's placed in the middle of the pad, fine. What about its ground definition? And we're going to get into that, but, and this sounds a little strange, but the point port's ground is actually at infinity, which is kind of a weird sounding place to have a ground. But we'll get into it. It actually does work uh, usually. Of course, like all things in engineering, we need to check it. And I'll give you the caveats. Can they be calibrated? Uh, no, they can't. Um, these are more like probe ports. So think it's like a red probe tip going down on the pad. Uh, they have very low parasitics, and hopefully they are accurate enough for board-type problems. Again, we'll talk in more details on that in a minute. I've already gone through a lot of this slide. It's a lot of words. Uh, let me just quickly give you a few of the highlights. What we're doing with point ports is there's a trade-off between ease of use automatically set up, which you saw, they're just placed automatically on the pads of every net you select, and accuracy. That's always a trade-off. Of course, if you tweak them manually and really uh, stare at them, you can maybe do better, but it's going to take you time. So when we were developing point ports, uh, we had this 
trade off this yin yang thing, if you will, ease of use versus full custom getting the most out of it we could. In point ports, what we did is we realized for a typical board, first of all, you're usually looking at them with surface mount parts. So you don't have one point port, you have two and the current's going into one and out of the other, the two ends of your surface mount part, that actually helps. Because any errors from one point port are negated by the other. It's almost like differential pairs. And so that, is, that's, that helps us. I mentioned the ground is at infinity. The good news is we typically have other power planes, and in particular, we're always free to put a power plane on the bottom to infinity even though nothing is hooked up to it, it can help. The third thing is the RF frequencies involved. We're not millimeter wave here. Uh, we're usually a couple gigahertz. Uh, these are, I want to call them low frequency, of course, but they're not exactly straining the requirements of quasi-TEM modes and, and standard kinds of transmission line theory. That's good news for point ports. Uh, the accuracy required is typical signal integrity kinds of numbers. You're worried about an eye diagram closing. You're worried if certain nets are too close to other nets. You're probably, with this, not going to be doing a 100 dB suckout filter or a 96 uh, gigahertz millimeter wave type filter. Uh, it's going to be more typical board things. Again, that helps point ports uh, because of the accuracy requirement. OK. Do they always work? No. Uh, here are some cases where you better be careful. Just a single port, okay? One port attached to an antenna. I might worry about it. Again, a high Q filter. Um, you might want to worry about it and be going, using a calibrated edge port. Point port is in the middle of the pad, so there is a phase change as you go to the edge of the pad. Uh, possibly your reference plane is a few degrees difference, if that matters to you. And any case where the technology would be stressed. High frequency, thick boards, things like this. Okay, uh, let me show you a couple cases that where point ports are stressed. Uh, it's easy to show you the nice cases, so why don't we show you a couple of the difficult ones. And second of all, I want to get into the physics a little bit more, and hopefully you'll get a better understanding how they work. I want to start with the worst possible case for a point port. Now, I said the ground is at infinity, the ground reference of the port. I am going to make a finite uh, area ground plane. And you can see it on the right here. It's that purple ground plane. It's meshed up in axiom. There is no infinite plane below it. This is all that's in the universe. I have three lines there with three ports. The first port is the point port. Notice it's just open stubs. This is also the worst possible case for a point port. You don't have any other point port helping you. I am just having, uh, of course, something that should ideally have a magnitude of 1 for its S parameter. We'll see how they do. The second port uh, is not a point port. That is the classic edge port. And you can see that green strap there down to ground. That's your calibration strap. It is made of metal. This port is calibrated or de-embedded, as they usually say in numerical EM. Uh, it's the most accurate port we have in Axiom. We'll see how it does. The final, the third port is a variation on point ports. Uh, and it says connect to lower. It's actually, when you set it up, you set it up like a ground strap, but there's no strap there. It actually turns out to be two point ports, uh, although you can't see the second one. The second one is actually buried in the ground plane, which we'll get to. Okay, here's a close-up of the same thing. So again, on top uh, is our point port, ground at infinity. This would be your default setting, bringing this thing into Axiom. Second one, green one, edge port, most accurate we have. We calibrate it. With that strap, where you got a good reference to the ground plane below. And the third one is this variant on a point port. It says ground to lower. There actually is an image point port, a negative point port, opposite polarity, on that purple ground plane. You're not seeing it in this picture, uh, but it is there. So again, it's a plus minus pair, a yin yang thing. Maybe it can do better. Let's try it out. Here's your answer. Uh, I think we agree the blue curve is not going to go so well for us. 
Uh, clearly, uh, we have massive errors. Uh, there's no physics there. The point port, the blue curve, has failed uh, as we expected. The edge port, uh, the best one we have, and instantly that we're going up to 10 gigahertz here with a duroid board uh, approximately 25 mils thick, so it's fairly thick. Um, the edge port, the purple curve, that's what you get. It looks reasonable, obviously, going around the outside of the Smith chart, slightly coming in at higher frequencies due to loss and radiation. Look at the point port with the ground to lower. That's where I said that they had that image one. It's not too bad. It looks like it kind of follows the purple curve. Uh, certainly much better than the blue curve. And so maybe that's a possibility. Let me show you a couple other quick examples that really stress out point ports. Differential pairs, again, it's a plus minus configuration. They tend to do better. We like differential pairs. Errors tend to cancel. They're our friend. In the top, ports one and two, top left here, two lines, those are point ports. Uh, lines three and four, those are the edge ports. We're doing a mutual calibration. Uh, three and four would be the most accurate we have in Axiom. On the right, I excite them differentially. Um, if you're not familiar uh, with that element, that MMCONB, that uh, takes a signal and turns it into differential. So by the time we're done, port one is the differential excitation of the point ports. Port two is differential excitation of the edge ports. And here's how we do. Um, it turns out, again, the point ports do uh, not do as well as the edge ports. At least we're staying inside the Smith chart. Now, remember before with one of these things, we were ridiculous. You can see the differential is helping. However, and it's a bit of an eye chart, if we look at that Smith chart, the blue curve, the point port, is going in and then coming back out a little bit. It's still some physical issues, but it's getting better. Again, the purple curve, the best we have the edge port. The bottom picture is something called passivity, and this uh, basically tells me how much the structure, uh, the S parameters, are absorbing energy. Uh, and I can learn a lot from the physics of that. What you see is if the, on the left, if it's one, it means nothing is absorbed. The, everything is reflected or goes through. As we go down on that curve on the left, on the scale on the left, we get more energy absorbed. I would expect in open stubs like this to start at one, nothing absorbed. As we go up in frequency, the curve to go slightly downward, energy is absorbed through uh, conductor loss, a little radiation out, off the end. That's what you're seeing with the purple curve, which looks about right. Look at the point parts, the blue curve. It stays passive, but it, it gets a very big loss and then goes back up. So they're still struggling, but they're doing better. Um, in conclusion, point ports have a lot of advantages. The main one is they're set automatically. They can work quite well. They work better at low frequencies. They work better when they're pairs, which is typically what you're going to get in surface mount parts. They can have disadvantages, and what I wanted to show you here is the physics behind them, the ground at infinity, the fact they're not calibrated. Instantly, why do we put ground at infinity? We want to make sure all the ports have the same ground, and it's quite frankly the only place I know you have in your simulation. You have infinity. And Axiom knows about infinity, and we can place it there. So it's, again, automatic. It's, it's an easy place to set the ports. I deliberately showed you some places where they struggle. Uh, higher I gave you some higher frequencies. And I actually just had one point port, not two, with an open stub. And you saw it failed. It was a thick board. When I added them in differential pairs, they did better. Um, so again, point ports can work quite well. You can make them better if you want to take the time with your board to actually go in and change things to, for example, point port connect to ground, which then adds that image on the ground plane. But you have to go in and kind of know where the ground is of, of a certain port.
So with that, I will conclude. Uh, we continue to work on point ports. We're very excited about the technology. Uh, we feel it's a technology that allows you, the designer, to bring in a realistic board, have ports automatically placed, and get a reasonable answer uh, for your typical situations that you care about. Thanks a lot, everyone, and have a great day.